All right, guys, this is my first call of the morning. No AC. As you can see, it line is sweating. I can feel ice on it. I do not hear a fan running. Come over here to the thermostat. Okay, it is, it's calling for cooling. So, we don't have a fan. So I'm gonna take this door off here. We probably got a bad motor. And uh, we'll dig into it. All right, it's pretty typical to see the coil frozen up. Fans, of course, not running. Have the power off. Most likely, the module. That's 90% uh, the case with these ECM motors. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a look down here. And this is the return area. And it's dry right now. So... I have a shop vac handy just in case we start getting a lot of water down into that base. I can go ahead and start vacuuming that out. But right now I'm going to put this in heat mode and try to thaw this coil out. And I'm going to disable the electric heat. Okay, so basically I just disconnected the white wire here. I know that goes to my electric heat. I don't want the electric heat to come on and cut off. Let me turn my breaker back on. And I'm going to put this in. I got it turned off right now. I'm going to put it in heat. And there's no sense in adjusting the fan because it's not going to work. And I'm going to have to bump the heat up so the unit will turn on. fan is working now but yet it stops I think we have a bad we have a problem there with that module so I'm not even gonna waste any time with that motor we're just gonna replace it I think the outdoor unit is timed out where I had the power turned off the thermostat may be on a delay thermostat is not delayed but the outdoor unit most likely is I'm gonna walk outside and just take a look at it all right the unit turned on just as soon as I got out here you can see the chunk of ice on there and the water the water all around it and you can see there that everything is pretty much iced up I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm not going to put an ECM motor on here. I'm going to go with a PSC motor and a relay just to show you some of you guys that haven't done it um, how to do it. So anyway, stay with me guys. I'm going to go grab a motor and a relay and we're going to change the fan motor. Alrighty, I got all my wires disconnected from the fan. I've got the screw right here out. And these two screws out right here, you're going to need to take this, right here's where my ground was at. So you're going to need to take that screw out also. And so after removing those three screws and disconnecting the power, we should be able to pull the fan out. And I can hear it dripping water down into the base. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and get this fan pulled out. Okay, the... Fan motor and housing is pulled out. I have it sitting here in the floor. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the motor and um, we'll go get the new motor. All right, that's what the shaft looks like. It's got a little bit of rust on it. So basically what I'm going to do is I have some sandpaper. I'm going to just sand the shaft up. And then I have what I use oil you could probably use WD-40 or anything or some 3-in-1 oil but I'm gonna sand it down put the crawl on it and then you've got this um, set screw here I'm gonna take the set screw off and with any luck 
it should drop out but what I tend to do is I'll get my adjustables or crescent wrench and I'll hold the fan wheel still and I'll just work back and forth on the shaft and it will the more I twist it back and forth the more it'll drop down through the uh, wheel so I'm going to go ahead and do that okay I got the shaft clean and free of rust that's a mistake that a lot of people make they don't clean the shaft off before trying to drop it through the wheel and you got to think that that rust on that shaft adds uh, a little bit more girth and uh, makes it harder for it to drop through but I've got it sanded so I'm gonna take some of my crawl here and just don't need a lot just a little bit and then I'm gonna take the set screw out and this sucker should drop right out All right, as soon as I loosened the set screw, it just instantly dropped down. You can see, I think it's gonna come out without any issue. Okay, I've got the bolts out and I got them set aside. You notice this is a little boogered up from the factory. That's why when I put my bolts back in, I'll use this and spray on here. That way the washer doesn't bind it up. But I'm gonna go ahead without doing anything and just try to pull the motor straight out. There it goes. That was fairly easy. So I'm going to take this belly band off and uh, we'll get the new motor. Alright guys, I got the PSC motor uh, mounted into the housing. And one thing you want to make sure of right here as you can see my phone will focus in all right single phase 60 Hertz one-third horsepower 208 230 volt 2.8 amps 1035 rpm now I tried to get as close to that as I could with this one it's a third horsepower it's a 175 it's a little bit higher rpm but it's a 208 and it's a 2.7 amp draw so that's pretty close to the factory motor. Alright guys, before I go any further, I just want to give you a, a description of everything I've done so far. Um, coming off the motor, the white wires are common. I got it tagged into the yellow wire. That has uh, 120 volts on it. And the let me see the blue wire here this is your medium medium speed coming off the motor I got it going up and I got it coming up here to my 90 92 380 or 90 92 80 or 90 80 or whatever you want to call those things anyway it's a fan relay I got it coming up here this is on the um, normally open side and so I got power feeding into this side here and when it calls for the fan this coil here will energize and send power over here to this side which is going back to I'm sorry I got it backwards my power is coming in on this side this side here is where my power is coming in and when it makes contact, it feeds back and goes to the blue, which is my medium speed. Okay. This brown wire here, it's, it's common. It comes back through, and I got it wired up to the common. And I just use brown here um, just for sake that I didn't have a, a different wire to use. But typically brown is common as well. And right here, I used green, and I hooked it up right here which is green and that's that's typically fan on this carrier they use gray for fan but I used I used green green is more of a universal uh, more commonly known color for fan so anyway and then I got the 5 microfarad capacitor and it's uh, wired up and here is my other leads this is a three-speed motor uh, black your high 
reds are low. I won't be using these. I'm going to tape these ends up. And right here for the low voltage, I'm just going to tape these wires up. I'm going to get everything uh, zip tied and put back together and get it, get it looking really neat before I uh, leave it this way. I just wanted to show you guys and kind of give you a, an explanation of everything that I've done so that if you in the future want to try to bypass having to buy one of these uh, ECM motors, that it kind of gives you some sort of uh, some sort of an explanation of what you need to do. So I'm going to get everything buttoned up and uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, I got everything zip tied up, buttoned up, everything's secure, all the wires are put back. So this is the moment of truth. Turn that breaker on and I'm just going to switch it to the fan. I hear the fan. Okay, and basically that's it, guys. That's all it is to it. So anyway, I'm going to end the video here. But guys, please, if this was helpful at all, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks, guys. See you later.